we're with Michael Fox here today and I'm an international athlete um, about to run the FSGT France International Cross Country Race. Um, well Mick, how are things going? Uh, things are going quite well, thanks very much. Um, how's training going at the moment? Uh, training's going very well at the minute, touch wood now. I've come back from a few years off and a bit of injury, but things are going well at the minute, yes. Yeah, that's good, um, that's good to hear. For the people who don't know you, how many miles a week would you run? Uh, at the minute, I'm up to seven mile a week. Um, I'm trying to get my mileage up now. My long-term goal will be to get my mileage up to ten mile a week. But I'll, I'll need to change a few things in my life, and I, I need to ask my boss for some time off. I'll need at least four rest days a week to run ten mile a week. Oh, yeah, that's understandable. Um, this weekend you have today. Actually, you have the international FSJT championships. Um, how do you think that'll go? Uh, yeah, we've got that race now in a few hours actually, um, a few big athletes, a few very big names, um, but to be honest, I'll, I'll probably win the fucking thing, like, um, if, if there's a few nice guys out there that have been training hard and stuff and they work hard during the race, I'm, I could probably let them win, you know, I'm, I'm nice like that, but I could probably win it. Um, you spent some time away from the sport, what did you do in the time off, or why did you take the time off? Uh, it, to be honest, it was like forced time off. I had, I had a few bad injuries. My main injury was in my, in my wee finger here. Um, I, I hurt it really bad and it, it put me out for six years. Um, but I've got it all fixed now. And that, I did a few different things in my time off, different sports and stuff. But I'm back now, injury free, touch wood. Well, obviously you missed the world indoors for this race. Um, but if this race all goes to plan and everything goes right, what are your plans after this? Um, I had to miss the world indoors because indoors is very different now. You you can't just you know it's not like normal. It's very hot and dry climate in there, and I had no Vaseline left for my lips, so I had to give it a miss anyway. My plans after today is long term is probably the Olympics. Um, I haven't quite made the qualifying time yet. I'm only a few seconds away, but you see I'm friends with London twenty twelve on that old that old fake book stuff, so. They sent me a private message, you see, saying that I can go if I want, like, so I'll, I'll keep that to myself and I'll, I'll, I'll go for that. That's good to hear. A um, bit of fun now, ten quick fire questions, just answer with the first thing that comes to your head. Right. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Right, well, number one, what's your favourite place in the world? Uh, there's a wee field out the back of Milford in Armagh, there a wee small place, um, just a few wee sheep in it and stuff like it, so it's a very, very peaceful place. Um, that wouldn't be just my favourite now, when you're in Font Remote, big training camp for all the elite athletes go, it's like me, God and we're all one and that's probably my favourite place right there. Uh, favourite TV show? Uh, probably Monk. What's your favourite food? Probably breadsticks, like I've got a thing for breadsticks, I have to eat at least uh, six of them before my race as you can see, I have to keep them on side all the time. Like, so. That would be my favourite food, yeah. What's your favourite sport besides running? Um, my favourite sport would probably be darts. You know, uh, I appreciate a good dart player. They're probably like an athlete that can keep in good shape and train hard and spend a lot of time dedicated to their sport. Like, so it would probably be darts. Uh, your favourite athlete? Uh, my favourite athlete? I'm not too sure. Now. It'd probably be a fella called Daniel Mooney. Um, He's an arrogant little prick, like, but by fuck he can run. So I, I'd probably pick him as my favourite, yeah. Any superpower, what would it be? Uh, my superpower would be, I'd be invisible. Because I'd be able to pass everybody in the race, and then I'd make myself visible at the, with 100 to go, and win the race. What's the funniest things ever happened to you in running? Ever happened to me? Uh, oh, I know, it would be, when I was in Fontremeau, that elite training camp in Fontremeau, uh, a guy called Mo Farah came and asked me, could he, could he train with me, do 200s with me? Like, uh, he's a good athlete and a nice guy and all the rest, but like, I, I had a laugh. Like, I don't know who he thinks he is, been able to run 200s with me. Like, so that was quite funny. If you could out and run for any other club in the world instead of Armagh, who would you run for? <sighs> you see, if I gone for anyone else, then my coach would be very unimpressed. Like, but uh, I, I'd probably pick Oregon Track Club. Um, I wouldn't run for them, but if I really had to, I'd pick them out. They've a lovely vest. But nice vest to have. If you could have any woman in the world, who would it be? <sighs> Tough one. Uh, probably Subo. Um, I hear she makes a mean sandwich, and 
she can fucking sing. She can so she be my number one woman in the world. Finally, Michael, who is the one athlete or one person in the world you look up to? Uh, probably a guy called Pete Matthews. Um, not a lot of people might know Pete Matthews, but he's a big name in athletics and he's run for Britain. You know, he has. He's he's got the socks. He's got the fucking shorts. The bag that he's got the lot. It's only for fair running, like. But he's he's a good. I look up to Pete. Now I look up to a lot of people as I'm quite short. Um, I'm only four forty eight myself. I look up to quite a few people, but uh, be Pete Matthews. Russ, thanks for that interview, Michael, and uh, good luck today. Thanks very much.